All right, now we are live. So welcome everyone to Beyond the Lecture, where we talk everything and anything education. Now, uh, typically, I bring in my colleagues uh, to a uh, as a guest to the show, but I thought this time it would be interesting to bring in a fresh perspective and uh, get a get some comments and perspective from my students. Okay, and uh, this time round, so I invited a student from my class to join us this time round and give us a little bit of talk about his experience in terms of his education journey so far, uh, going through COVID-19 and all. So, Kevin, say hi. Hi, uh, my name's Kevin. Um, I'm 25 this year. Uh, I'm currently on my final year. Like I'm starting my final year at uh, Coventry University's uh, Media and Comms uh, degree. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, as mentioned earlier, so Kevin is a student of ours and uh, he's been with us for the past year and a half or so. One is year, it? one year. But yeah? yeah, okay, heaven, cool. Yeah. So during that year, you know, uh, so what, 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 when would you say exactly you started uh, your undergraduate classes? Which month exactly uh, in 2020? I started in July 2020. July intake. Okay, so it's still under a year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> so not a year, yeah. So not a year, yeah. You hit one year in July, mm. I suppose. So in July 2020, so that's sort of like, I would argue that the peak of COVID, yeah. you would say, right? Peace. Two. Phase two. Phase two. Everything is still on heavy lockdown, mm. isn't it? So, how has that been for you? You'd say, as in regards to school, or yeah, with school, or even your your sort of your decision to think. Okay, it's phase two, and uh, and I'm thinking about you know starting my undergraduate. Has that been planned, or was there a situation where you thought of okay, let's put this in the back burner, and uh, maybe continue my job for a while, you know, get some income along the way. Did you in any way think that this would sort of affect your learning experience going into it? Uh, so, about the job thing, well, I, I wasn't really thinking about that because I actually took a gap year in 2019. Yeah, 20, the whole of 2019 and 2018 was a gap year for me because I, I ORD from NS in 2019. So I had one gap year before I went to uni and that, that year was the year that was meant for me to work. So when... I already told myself that I was going to start uni in 2019. So the job wasn't a factor. La. But the COVID was a factor, but I didn't really expect it to be so bad. Mm -hmm. Like in the back of my mind, I was thinking, hoping that I'll still have actual classes. La. And then when, when they told us that everything is online, I was like, wow. Yeah. So I didn't like, didn't expect it. But at the same time, I just deal with it since I'm already here. Okay, yeah. so it, it, it didn't cross your mind to sort of delay it or something and maybe think like, okay, uh, maybe I'll wait six months, wait a year until COVID is off before I continue. Like, because let's face it, you're, you're, you're paying good money for this. You know, it, it's, it's not going through an under, undergraduate course. It's not exactly, uh, you know, uh, chump change, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're talking ten ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars $20,000 and uh, it's hard in money, whether it's for yourself or your mm -hmm. parents. So, it, it's not like it's it's gotten cheaper mm -hmm. because of COVID, right? So, if anything, you're you're paying the same amount of money with arguably less of an experience, yeah, isn't yeah. it? So, did did that sort of influence yourself or in terms or your family's direction going into what they think uh, you should go through during COVID? My my family my family standpoint was very uh, like exactly uh, like faster go uni. So uh, there, there was really that that pressure for my family to start uni. So, like, I knew I was going to start. And this this COVID thing, like, I didn't really think of that much about it when I applied. I applied in early 2020, like, before before COVID hit, I applied. Okay. I think so. Yeah, so so I didn't have the knowledge that this, this, uh, this pandemic would be so bad. So, like, that wasn't a factor. So when it hit, I was already enrolled in the school already. So... I didn't want to delay anymore in a way. Uh. Okay. So what 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 was your your educational uh, background prior to joining us for your undergraduate? Uh, I was from the diploma in media and communications in Singapore Polytechnic. Okay. Actually, is it doesn't exist anymore. It used to be called diploma in media, DMC diploma right. in media and communications. Now now it's it's called MAD. Uh, MAD. It's media arts and design. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. And prior to that, I was in JC for one year, but I dropped out. Okay, what led to that? Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> JC was like a, how to say, like a learning 
learning je- like a wasted one year. Okay. But it was a learning year because because of JC, I figured out that I'm not the type that can study. You put me with a textbook, ask me to study. I I cannot. I, I need to have a more hands-on approach. And in JC, we had a course called PW Project Work. Yeah, that was the only subject in JC which I enjoyed. And and that subject is basically media and communications. Okay. Basically, because it's like you must. For mine was you must find something. You need to invent something to right. improve the lives of something. I see. Yeah. So, I we had to think of all the pitch, all the how to promote it, and and then pitch to the teacher, and that was the that was the subject that really made me like in like gain interest in mm. the media and communications field. In a way, uh. Okay, so I'm going to dig deeper mm. into the the whole dropout situation. Sure. Okay, so, um, how long were you in to your to your to your JC uh, uh, education, right? Mm-hmm. Before you, you decided that okay, this is not for me, or I want to drop out. And how did your par- uh, How did your parents uh, sort of reconcile <laughs> with that? Okay, how long did it take before I realized that I didn't want to be in JC? Mm. First week of school. <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> the thing is, but you didn't drop out in your first week. Uh, no, no, no. I, I dropped okay. out in my first like because JC is like it's like secondary school. The, there's a mid, there's a two years. So in the middle, there's a I can't remember what it's called. The the test that is before the actual mm. A level. Yeah, that one's the point where I drop out. Mm. But one week of JC was all it took for me to realize that this is not for me. Like right. I actually remember like in secondary school, right, my favorite subject was physics. Like I love mm. physics so good. When I went to JC, the first, my first physics lesson, I was like, what is the teacher saying? Okay. <laughs> what is going on? So it's like, I cannot catch anything at all. So I couldn't understand anything from any lesson. And then when when it comes to like studying on my own, I didn't have the motivation to do so. So it just spiraled out of control. And by the end, I was like, uh, I, might, I'll, I'll, I will go poly. I don't want to pursue this anymore. Okay, so... There must be something about the way the the course or the the curriculum is being delivered that didn't speak to you, isn't it? Whether it's uh, I don't know, maybe it's the classroom setting that doesn't work for you. Maybe it is a little bit too academic and not enough hands-on experience. What was it for you that sort of tell you that, you know, um, this is not for me. I need something a little bit more hands-on. What was the trigger point for you? Is it the environment? Is it the pressure? Or what? What is it? Because, okay, let's face it, you were, how old were you now? How old are you now? I'm 25. You're 25. I was, so when you were, JC, you were? That's, wait, 2014. So let's do the math. Minus 11. Wait, cannot be, uh? 17? <laughs> was I? 17, 18? Uh, around there, la, around there. Around okay. There. Yeah. So of course, you're, you're, I wouldn't say you're immature, right? That that would be immature for me to say that. So <laughs> yeah, I would say, that, okay, maybe your know, the thought process hasn't really ripened yet for you at that time. Yeah, right? I didn't want to, I didn't know what I wanted to do at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So but you do know that at that time media and communication is the one thing that you feel maybe I can go into it a little bit more. Is it? So okay, so basically I knew that sciences and maths mm. is not for me. So I knew that my strongest subject in a way was English my speaking skill my presenting skills mm. I knew that that was my strongest point so I need to ignore all the things I'm not good at and focus on the strong stuff mm. so I knew that I wanted to go to a poly course that requires a lot of communication like and that gives me the opportunity to pitch an idea to a client so media and communication is just like the perfect fit like it was either media and communications or business mm. yeah but business uh, yeah media and communication better Okay, so again, um, for for the benefit of those for the oh. benefit of those listening, right? Mm. What exactly about media and communication that sort of speaks to you? Is it something that you've, is it something that you've always been interested in since your childhood days, or it it's sort of something that you've you you slowly found a a calling towards at a later stage? I, I guess I I grew into it. Uh. So I I started as I said, knowing that I just I just wanted a course that doesn't have maths, doesn't have science. And has a lot okay. of talking, so okay. it's like once I entered, I was like, that's why that's why I went to uh Singapore Poly's media and comms because their course is the most general, uh course. It's it's not a what was that word like. It's like a jack of all trades course. Mm. Like everything is in that course. So I I chose that course because I didn't really know 
which aspect of media I wanted to go in yet. So I wanted to do everything. So over time, I got into production, like got really into pitching stuff to clients. Mm. Yeah, so I guess... Uh, Did you do any of those things on your own? Pitching, mm-hmm. pitching to clients, doing production work? Before you went into your, before you go into see you at, at this point, or before you went into Singapore Poly, you did clients work, is it? Ah uh, no no. So uh, production wise, I did very very casual. Like I mm. was the behind the scenes persons for my friend's YouTube channel. Fair That's enough. A, okay. My production and of course my internship in Poly lah was mm. I was a editor and a P and a production assistant. Okay. Yeah. Then for client wise, no no, I I never actually had any outside experience. But the thing about uh Singapore Poly is that we had the in our in our final year we had like a how do you say we split into our various uh interest groups so i went to the more production side and the lecturer actually gave us a lot of opportunity like she actually asked like actual clients to be to guide us for our projects so it's not it's not just presenting to a teacher it's actually presenting to actual clients and then sure enough the the client actually chose one of the groups for their actual uh, right campaign. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you were fresh off poly and then you go straight into CU, right? Sort of. You have an uh, in between. No, I went army first. Okay, you went army first. So you so, had a you had how long I was had that? Three, uh, three, three years. Three year gap. Okay. Basically, basically, I kind of forgot everything. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so but, yeah. did so when you sort of kick started this again in your undergraduate in PSB mm. did. Any of the knowledge in poly sort of uh, come back to you all of a sudden, and did you sort of apply any of those knowledge into your post? Uh, in, sorry, uh, into your undergraduate. Thing about media and comms, mm. it's it's very easy to pick back up. Like mm. I didn't, I had legit no knowledge when I came into CU, mm. so I was like, oh, I can't remember anything I did. But I slowly, slowly, I was like, oh, I remember, I remember doing this back in poly. I remember doing this. It just comes back very easily. It's, it's not like like engineering or something where you need to go and mark. Like it, it just comes back naturally la. and also a lot of the things that I learned in poly was kind of it was kind of common sense mm-hmm. so didn't really need to to think that much la, basically mm. like, a lot of a lot of things that I apply in currently in the undergrad course is common knowledge I, to me it's common knowledge la. Mm. But, yeah so yeah, okay. yeah, no problem la. cool so you you say it's common knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it may not be the case yeah, for true, everyone, true, true. you see, because uh, you've you've worked with uh, students fr- uh, from different backgrounds at this mm-hmm. point. You know, you've worked with students from various countries at this mm-hmm. point, whether it's Vietnam, whether it's China, whether it's uh, Malaysia, you know, so, and uh, your, uh, our very own local Singapore students, right? Mm-hmm. So they all bring arguably something different to the table, right? Sometimes they bring some something that is not so desirable in a sense where they they are not as cooperative as you'd like them to be. That aside, though, mm-hmm. right? Um, how has it been so far juggling all this uh, communication in the context of you know a COVID environment? Because your assignments, right? Yeah, I mean, you had a class under me, right? Mm-hmm. So your assignments do require you to uh, logistically arrange for Zoom meetups or some kind of an online meetup to mm. make sure your assignments gets done, right? So how how do you get that, uh, you know, over with? I mean, definitely because of everything is online, it's mm. way more difficult to to like interact with, the cl- with our classmates. Mm. Like poly, we never had this yeah. problem in poly. Every day, go to school. Every day, see each other. Yeah. So it's like the the vibe of mm. the classroom is very very different when it comes to poly versus now in uni la. Like it's so dead quiet now versus poly when every class was noisy. People mm. were asking questions left and right. People were making jokes in the middle of class just mm. to lighten things up. And it's now it's like very hard to talk because we don't know each other and not not all of us speaks English. So it's like uh for the assignment wise, I mean it was fine uh, It Texting is way easier than talking to each other in person. So I guess, I mean, we got by and I was just lucky enough to have a teammate who had connections. So he was able to secure a guest very fast. I think in like two weeks, we secured a guest. So the communication issue, yeah, it's a problem, but I was lucky enough not to face it. 
mm-hmm. because of the the ease that we we secure our guests. And it's not like their English is very bad. Like their English is good. Mm. Like I can understand, so it's fine, uh, But of course, the problem of talking in class is still is still an issue, uh, the, Yeah. The, the, th- quiet th- the, the, the thing about, at least from my end, I'm going to give you a teacher's perspective, mm. right? The conducting classes over what we use is Blackboard, right? So mm-hmm. conducting classes over Blackboard or Zoom or Teams or whatever, most of the struggle is not so much in teaching. You know, we, we, we pretty much teach the same way. You know, you, you have your materials, you go through it. It's a little bit different in, in the context of uh, your module with me because that's more of a hands-off module from my end. Self-led learning. Those are, yeah, it's mainly self-led learning from, from uh, the student's perspective. But... Other courses, other modules, like, uh, I don't know, engaging with media configuration, for example, mm. the more theoretically driven modules, right? Those are, in a traditional sense, delivered to you in a more, um, how to say, um, it, it, it's more so of a one-way traffic thing from the lecturer's perspective, mm-hmm. right? They, they tell you the theories, how the theories apply, and maybe there's some Q&A at the end of the class. The, tr- the struggle of teaching during COVID is that it, it becomes very difficult when we don't have the same engagement in class as we do uh, in a physical environment, right? Go, being online, I don't see your faces, <laughs> right? Even if we encourage people to, our students to turn on the webcam, they don't, right? So at some point, you sort of feel like, you know what, let's not waste 15, waste 15 minutes of class trying to get everyone to turn on, lap, turn on the webcam. So let's just get on with the lessons. Okay, so... That's the struggle. Although this is a short-lived experience in the grand scheme of things. You know, this is not going to be how education is going to be delivered for the next 50 years. So it is unfortunate, but it's something that we sort of have to go through in order not to slow down the learning process. Mm. Okay. With that said, though, back to you, mm-hmm. right? Um, do you think that, you know, learning in a, in a, in a COVID context, learning in a COVID environment where you can kind of have to attend class online. You you wake up at eight twenty five for a class that starts at eight thirty. <laughs> you know, it happens, you know. I get that. So, I wake up at eight fifteen for a class that you know starts at eight thirty. Uh, just put on a, a proper looking t shirt, clean up my hair, and then I'm good. I'm good to go and deliver my class. Right? It's not the same where I have to wake up and uh, maybe uh, take the MRT, come mm-hmm. all the way to work. So I don't have to do all those things. So in 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 essence, that's beneficial. But what do you lose for you? You know, because you, you clearly have something to compare it to. You mentioned earlier, JC is all lively, you know, people are talking all the oh, time. The poly. Oh, sorry, Polly. <laughs> Polly is all JC lively. Is not lively okay, fine. So, <laughs> Polly is, my bad, my bad. So, Polly is lively, and uh, you have a lot of students, you know, you have a lot of co- uh, corroborations, collaborations. So, all that sort of gets taken away mm. because of COVID, mm. right? You don't get to be in class. And even when you do come to class, it's sort of at near the end of the term already and everything sort of gets sorted out already at that point, right? Your recording is done, your assignments are almost finished. So there's nothing much to discuss at that point except to figure out how your submissions are going to be like. Mm. So again, going back to my question, learning in a COVID environment, do you feel like you've lost some, you've lost anything? Right? And on that end, right, upon answering that question, what do you feel you have gained mm. that other students would not have okay. learning from a COVID environment? All right? Okay. So start with the loss first. Uh. Yep. Definitely interaction with yep. other people. So mm. it's like online classes, nobody talks to anybody, nobody knows what each other look like. So it's like even if you are not sure of what the teacher is saying there's still that hesitation to ask because, you know, we are all conservative people. Like, if this, was, if this wasn't a COVID setting and we were actually in class, I'm pretty sure there's no problem with people just interrupting teacher in the middle of class and ask what, what she meant by this, for example. Like, there's none of that really in an online environment. Like, at most, if someone will ask a question, then maybe the teacher will speak a lot, a lot, a lot, but, but she maybe didn't catch the question or something like that. Like, it's not, there's no immediate... Uh, feedback when it comes to online lessons mm. and it's like okay la, you you lose a lot of that interaction and I guess uh, let, let me just uh, mm-hmm. jump in there for a while 
you said that there is no immediate feedback, right? Makes sense. There might not be immediate. Feedback. Might not be immediate change, feedback, yeah. but you see, that that's that's the interesting thing about having a student into this conversation because the feedback typically come typically comes from the student, mm -mm. right? You know, it, it's usually us lecturers that ask, "Is everything okay? So far, so good. You guys understand?" And usually, from my experience, it's dead silent. Yep. <laughs> okay, I don't get. I I, I mean, the zip, nothing, nothing, coming from students. So. You mentioned that the feedback is lacking. So the impetus is sort of on the student, isn't it? It's on you, in mm. essence, to say something to make it a two-way street. Okay, because this cannot be forced, mm -mm -mm. especially in an in a, in a online environment. Because in the classroom, I can sort of pressure you guys into saying something. It works in that sense because we are all in this, in the, in, in the, in the context of the four walls, right? Mm. But in a, in a virtual environment, you can stay quiet and there's not, literally nothing I can do. So, why you didn't say anything? Why is there no feedback on your end? I can't speak for everybody. But yeah. Speak for yourself. Okay, like, okay if, <laughs> if, let's take this situation and put it in online versus offline. Sure. It, of, of the same situation, teacher asks question. Anybody, anybody has any question? Yeah. If I was in class and I had a question, I confirm will say something. Mm. Even if I don't have a question and I have a funny remark, <laughs> I will say the funny remark. Exactly. But when it comes to an online environment, there's something different about it. It's like, there's, there's no, <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to say something, even mm. if I want to say something, like, should I say it's online? Like, doesn't really. Is it, it, okay, is it a, is it a Pisces situation? Yes. <laughs> well, it's, why it's, is that? It's, it's something like a Pisces situation. Also, it's like a, if, I probably can find out on my own kind of thinking as well. Like, there's something about online classes that really takes the the, the willingness to speak out away from students, I guess. So you, you sort of argue that it, the, 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 the ecosystem of being virtual in itself, you know, although it is interactive, it also inhibits, isn't it? I mean, because everyone is not doing it, it sort of makes you feel like you're, you're, you're standing up for all the wrong reasons if you're doing it yourself, even if you want to. So that sort of inhibits you to do it. Am I right to say that? It's like conformity, uh. Everybody, uh, everybody yeah. doesn't want to say anything. So why? So if I don't really need something urgently, why should I mention it? Mm. Like I, I, I think I will only ask a question on online classes if it was really, really urgent. Okay. Then I'll ask. But so far, there hasn't been any situation where what was taught cannot be found on your own. You know what mm. I mean? Like, even if you didn't, completely didn't catch what the teacher was saying online, you can re-watch the lecture because it's safe. So Have it's like, you rewatched anything? Uh, once or twice. Okay. But usually, assignment-wise, it's always research, research on your own. Uh. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So again, going back to your question. Yeah, going so back to the question. Yeah. that's what I lose. You lose okay. interaction. You lose... The ability to see what your peers look like. Okay. <laughs> you lose the ability to find out. Oh yeah, you you lose the ability to find out what your classmates are like before making a decision who you want to work with. Right. So like that's okay. really important because, especially in the media and communication environment, where most of our projects are group work. Mm. So, for me, it's very important to find out what a person is like first before saying, "Okay, let's do a project together." Mm. So in online classes, we don't even know each other's number. So the best we can do is private message on Blackboard. But even when you private message, you can't tell a person's personality or, or whether or not we can vibe, whether we can work together. So it's very difficult to gauge who is a potential good mate and who is not, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, so those are what you lose. La. But I guess what you gain, on the other hand, is, of course, a lot of independence. La. Because this course is... A lot of self, what is self-led learning. Yeah, yeah. So I guess my entire first term was online. Like there was no physical class, mm. so everything legit, do on my own. Mm. So it's like, it was a, uh, and it's just now I mentioned that when I when I came into this course, I knew I forgot everything. Okay. So so my first term was kind of like a throw into the frying frying pan learning. Mm. Yeah. So I had to do everything on my own, and like I didn't really have anyone to ask about because since I didn't know my classmates so I guess this really taught me how to do things on my own la. how to form my group on my own how to 
do every single aspect of every project on your own first. Because, like, there wasn't really an avenue for, uh, what's that word? Like, uh, ask teacher question, uh, consultation. Like, okay. It wasn't really, like, let's link it back to poly again. In poly, even if you need to ask a teacher a question or you need to talk to a teacher about something, you can simply just walk to the staff room, knock on the door. If the teacher okay. is there, you can do an impromptu con- consultation session. Because Very you're easy. because you're in poly because, all day. Yeah, because okay. because I'm in poly all day. So here, when everything's online, the the only option is to private message the teacher or email the teacher. Mm. The difference is the big difference. Mm. Like I wasn't very comfortable with doing the the email and private message stuff. Mm. I really prefer talking face to face because you mm. get that immediate feedback. But so, wh- why didn't you think of scheduling a, a Zoom call or, or a Blackboard session with the teacher? I don't uh, you know knew what, it's I possible, isn't it? Yeah, I, I know it's possible, but yeah. it never just it just really never occurred to me. It's like it's really very different when you are when you are talking to someone that you have never seen before. Okay, that's true. <laughs> then it's there's like a there's like a awkwardness or a hesitation to to wanna have this consultation session mm-hmm. like if this was a physical class and I actually know what the teacher looked like mm. how I interacted with the teacher before face to face I'm pretty sure it won't be a problem but mm. since everything is online there's no physical interaction I, I guess it, it kind of makes a difference so there's that sense of unfamiliarity eh, that so. sort of created that a little bit of distance between yourself yeah. and the lecturer definitely right okay Fair enough. But again, you, you mentioned that you've gained a lot of independence, mm. which you have otherwise would not have gained because there's so much that you need to do on your own. Mm. Okay, and on that end, how has that benefited you? Um, hmm. Mm. Mm. So it's, it benefited me because doing things on my own made me like learn back what I learned in poly. I, said I forgot okay. a lot of things in poly. So because I was like put into the fire. Mm. I had to own self go and think what how, how to do this, how to do this. So I learn learn back what I learned in poly very fast. Mm. So mm. like what else they gain hmm like essay writing on my own. Like I didn't really like back in poly I I had to ask a lot of people like how to write a certain way. <laughs> and <laughs> now that I can't do that Okay. I was like, okay, la, I, I I'll write on my own, see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And then I, I have to like read my own work, mark my own thing. I have no I have nothing to fall back on. So I guess it doesn't it didn't really teach me, it more forced me to right. force me to be independent. Yeah. So I don't know whether it's a learn it's it's teaching me or, or just, you know, cool. Throwing me to the deep end. Psychologically though, um, did you feel like the the, the pressure is on or do you feel like you know, just it's 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 still class. Just get on with it, and get our assignments done. What what, what do you feel different because of uh, what you might deem as a lack of support, uh, the lack of the environment? You know, fostering because I have seen students who who really struggle without having the educational environment, without having the 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 support of peers. You know, there there are people who whom I know who has who thrive very well with group mates around them, with teammates around them. Without it, you know, we, without friends, without the teammates to sort of drive the 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 progression of their coursework completion, mm. they just couldn't do it. So if they're if they're alone at home, for example, distractions like gaming, social media, YouTubing too much, not getting enough sleep, all that will culminate into eventually, uh, sadly to say, they drop out of the course. Right, so were you faced with anything similar of that sort? Because, like I said, you had to be independent, mm. right? That's just this is one of the criteria. If you're going to go through, um, um, not to say that there's no support, but a lot of the the impetus, a lot of the initiative will have to come from you, right? So, did that at any point sort of let you to feel like, oh man, this is so hard, this is so difficult, I can't deal with this? I mean, for me personally, I think I'm lucky enough that. I'm a I'm a learned extrovert, so I was normally uh, when I was young I was very introverted, so I only became more extroverted when I was in poly. So 
for me the the fact that I couldn't talk to people about this about my assignments didn't really affect me because I just reverted back to my old introverted ways and mm-hmm. I just stay at home do my do on my own. You know what I mean? But uh I guess for for me the like the the burden of having all online class was kind of lifted because at that point of time in July, every Saturday I was hanging out with my my poly mates, so mm. I had at least I had an avenue to rent to. Right. I was like, oh man, class is online only is so horrible. Were they going through similar things? Uh no, they, my all my friends had already graduated from their various courses or they mm-hmm. were already working. Okay. So, like, they were there to kind of rent with me. Hmm. Like, I guess they un- kind of understood because their course, one of them was actually going through like half. La. Like, mm. just started having the online only because he was going through a course, then the pandemic hit. Mm. So he kind of understood where I was going with that. Mm. So we at least had a similar thing to talk to talk about. Mm. But like, it's st- at the end of the day, it's still with, with the support from my friends, my body friends, still managed to get through that mm. that term of all online lah. But could right. have been worse. That's what I'm trying to say. Because just to give you my perspective, because when I, it's been uh, arguably since let's say last April. You know, we went almost completely online last April or May, if memory serves me well. So we are almost approaching one year now of having online classes. Mm -hmm. You know, we are bringing students back and uh, having physical classes now, but a good part of 2020 was completely online, Mm -hmm. right? So on my end, um, it's, it was such a welcoming news for me when I found out that, okay, I get to teach a few of my careers class physically on campus. It was such a welcoming news because at that point, nearing to the end of 2020, Right. I was already facing a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know what's the term for it, but I would call it online teaching fatigue. <laughs> because it's the same thing for me. Yeah, it's different modules, different subjects, but I'm sitting in front of a computer, same PC, same laptop, same walls, same room, right? Uh, looking at the same screen for hours on end. Okay, and again, I mean, it's the job, you got to get it done. I get it, but... The, the fatigue is starting to set in because like you said, I don't get the responses. <laughs> I, I don't get the feedback. You don't get the same chat. I, I don't get to, at best, I get to ask how is everyone doing at the beginning of the class, but that's pretty much it. But the upside of all this is that um, you get to spend more time at home with the family and uh, you know, get a two-year-old at Who's I got a one year old at a time, you know, so I get to spend more time seeing your kid grow up and mm-hmm. stuff. But teaching wise, it does get a little bit fatiguing. But going on that end, you do gain something, and uh, it pretty much gives you a glimpse into what education might be in the future. Because we know at this point that we cannot do away with classrooms. We cannot education just don't work as well, at least in my opinion, education just don't work as well if we have everything completely online. A mix of both would be a good welcome, perhaps, I don't know. Um, my guess is, right, at, at least from a, from a teaching perspective, it would be lovely if I can teach physically, right? But it will also be good if there are online avenues where students who Perhaps um, they are a little bit more introverted. Mm-hmm. They can take online courses and still, you know, complete their course if they wish to. Maybe, uh, maybe the back benches, maybe the ones that don't raise their hands, maybe the ones that want to stay quiet. Perhaps an online environment would suit them more. Again, not to say whether it's beneficial or not. I'm just saying it, it does sort of uh, kill two birds with one stone with blended mode. Okay, But again, this is something that I find needs uh, we we are still you know finding our way to 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 strike a good balance between online and physical. But what I do know is that personally, I love teaching physically, right? There is a there is a degree of um, convenience when it comes to online classes. You don't have to wake up early. You save a lot on transportation, but you lose a lot. You you lose that connectivity. 
you you lose you lose the friendship that you might forge mm-hmm. in that two to three years you know being with your colleagues being with your 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 friends so that's at least my perspective lah and uh, campus life is just not campus life when you don't have physical classes yeah you get what I mean right <laughs> you, you, it's not a situation where you say okay I get to go to the library and stuff you know students just couldn't go to the library anymore maybe once nope. twice <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to the library exactly <laughs> so we just don't go to the library anymore and that's fine I get that you know uh, approach to studying do change but you see the if you just look behind you for example you know, now we are we are having a, a term break so there's no people all around but even when there is a couple of weeks ago no it's still very <laughs> low no number of students it still looks pretty much yeah. the same right so There is not a situation where it's like vibrant. A lot of people are walking in and out, and then in, in and out of classes. And when the clock strikes twelve, there's a bunch of people going to lunch. You just don't see that nowadays. And in some way, whether directly or indirectly, it does have an effect on me. And it does. I I think it also have an effect on students. Of course. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. That that sort of the the vibrancy of having everyone here. So that's why I'm saying that. Having a good balance of both, something with an online component, but still giving as much of a chance as possible for students to turn up physically, and um, I think we, I think that would be the way to go, but only time will tell, right? I guess it, because because we are in the media and communications, yeah, like environment, like the fact that the fact is we need to speak up, yeah. So it's like the. The the thing you said about some people having being less like shy people, yeah, like they like it should be encouraged for them to to speak yeah, up. Exactly. You know? Because at the end of the day, we're gonna need to present mm. something, and you can't like shy your way through a presentation. So like for media and communications courses, especially, I think it's very important to have physical class. Like online class, maybe from what I can see is maybe lecture lecture sh- is okay for online class. I mean. Physical lectures back in poly was about the same thing. Or you go into a room, you listen to the teacher speak for for one hour, get out. Mm. So I guess this can be replicated in online environment. Mm. I, I mean, everyone is basically doing the same thing. It's just that you can't see each other. So so that one is still okay. But especially for tutorials and consultation, I guess it's very important to have a physical class because the feel is really very different between an actual group work in class versus the blackboard uh, group. Breakout yeah. group, yep. yeah, it's very different. That like mm. you don't really learn as much, I think. Yeah, like because when when you are having a physical discussion in class, there's always a chance that you will end up talking about other things, not just that specific uh, project or assignment. Yeah, yep. so I guess it gives us it gives students opportunity to to you know. Learn more about each other. Mm. Learn more about the course. Like when when you are online and you have a breakout group, it's usually the conversations in the breakout group is usually just about whatever that assignment was. Uh. After <laughs> after the assignment, everyone finished the assignment done already. No, nah. that's true. <laughs> there's nothing, and, and then there's true. there's also the the problem of finding out who is gonna present. Mm. So it's like there's a lot of issues when it comes to group work in mm. a online environment. That I feel like. Only, only a physical class can fix. There's still okay. So again, I I believe you. You probably agree with me that you still need uh, a certain degree of physicality to to learning, Definitely. isn't it? Especially in a media and com environment, yeah. because well, like you said, you know, media and com requires you to talk. Whether whether you're going to be in the front line of media and coms or even now uh, on the producing end, you know, at the backstage at the back end doing preparation work, uh, the, the production work. You still need to be able to communicate, right? That's media and comms, mm. and uh, to the students who are you know introverted, who are who are the quiet ones who are taking media and comms, this is not to say that this course is not for you. You certainly can be um, the media and comms students. You certainly can you know uh, learn to be a little bit more independent, learn to be a little bit more vocal, and I would argue that. It has nothing to do with how good you are in English. It has nothing to do with how good you are in the language that you speak. It's more so on how do you learn to communicate your ideas through with whatever you have on hand, 
whether it's your speaking skills, whether it's your body language, whether it's the the materials that you have at your disposal, the whole idea is to sort of um, get the idea across, get the message across from person A to person B. So when I teach my media and comms class, you know, it, you know, it starts with because there are three tiers of uh, students that I teach: certificate, diploma, and undergraduate. Right. Okay. So the when I start with my uh, certificate students. Yeah, typically about 16 years old, 17 years old, 18 years old maybe. So at that age, what I typically um, encourage them to do is, hey, you know what? You focus on how you communicate. How you communicate has nothing to do with your language. It helps, but it has nothing to do with how good you are in English. It has everything to do with how confident you are in, in voicing out, right? Voicing out. And... Uh, that sort of continues on when they do their presentations, when they do their pitching, when they do their studio work in their diploma and subsequently in going into careers in the media and going into their undergraduate courses where you have to do your, whether it's video essays, whether it's studio work, whether it's podcast work, all that will, it, it, it sort of reach a pinnacle at that point where you really have to learn to express yourself in many ways because even in a self-driven course like Careers in the Media for CU, right? It is a given that all of you have to conduct a podcast, mm. right? And Everyone all of you need to speak, mm. right? And I'm not telling you to ask the most perfect questions. I'm just telling you guys to... Um, the, the objective is to be part of the conversation. The objective is to converse. Not so much to ask, just ask questions and have it to be an interview. Right, I say that many times. You just have to have a discussion with whoever that you invite. Right, so the 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 good thing is that I see a lot of potential. Even though uh, I don't get to see you guys physically the whole time, right? When I go through your assessments, when I go through your the submissions that you guys gave, not just your group but various other groups as well, there's a lot of uh, untapped potential there. That from my view, if we if we were able to sort of provide the physical environment, that potential would flourish even more. That's just the way I see it. La. But potentially, mm. it can be the other way also. Because eh? when it comes to Zoom call, mm. I feel it, it's more comfortable for someone who is who's shy. Definitely. Zoom call is more yeah. So if you take that context and do an actual podcast, I, I feel like it might be even more awkward and shy. Mm. Like It's just about the confidence thing. La. Like, yeah. The fact, like, they... Granted that English is not their first language. Mm. So I feel like if the podcast was in their own language, there's a, there's more potential for them to have a more meaningful conversation with the guests mm. in regards to the career and media uh, assignment. Uh. Mm. So I, uh, it's just like certain things are better online, certain things are better in class. But, of course, but my stand is still when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to group work. Classes, classes. need to be in class. Fair <laughs> That's enough. My, still my stand now. Uh. Okay, so wrapping this whole thing up, okay, looking into the future a little bit, mm. um, you are potentially, if the future is friendly to us, assuming there's no COVID in the future, there's no other <laughs> viruses in the future, in the next 50 years or so, you would sort of stand out as one of the few batches of students that graduate uh, or went through an on, entire undergraduate session that is almost undergraduate course that is almost completely online you would argue right mm -hmm. half half la. half half la, uh -huh. right so it did you feel like that would have any impact on you in terms of your career prospects uh, or mean, ha have you given any thought on that yet I mean it definitely taught me that online classes are <laughs> uh, <laughs> horrible <laughs> but when it comes to career I mean, it told me that if I ever wanted to have a like a chatting session with a potential client, I'll definitely do it physically. Uh. I'll never do a, something like that on, online because I know it, the interaction is really not as good as a, a physical interaction. Mm. So it taught me that needs to be that, that this important stuff needs to be physical, physically, like talking to each other. You know what I mean? Like, uh. Yeah, it doesn't, I, I don't really have a plan for the future yet, so mm -hmm. I, hard, hard for me to say. Uh. Mm. But you're going into your dissertation phase of your uh, of your degree at mm. this point, mm. right? So 
thankfully a lot of the classes are back physically. Thankfully. Thankfully. <laughs> yeah. thankfully. So although it's, it's it's still a bit like looking at my timetable. There's class. still quite a few online. No, right? zero. Oh, is it? Oh, <laughs> every it's single class is, is, is in Physical class. now. So it's both, Excellent. yes, finally, and wow, every day school. Both of that okay. feelings together. So, it's, so it's, it's, it's like you have to reconcile the feeling of, yes, there's school now. But, oh, yes, there's school now. Yeah. <laughs> no, time. I can't wake up at 8.20 anymore. Yeah. yeah, I mean, give and take, lah, I suppose, right? No, of course... And at the end of the day, you can't really open, you can't really make it fully physical because mm. there are still people who are stuck overseas. La, so I understand, la, but eh, it will get better. Lo. Let's keep telling myself it's going to get better. It's, 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 this online thing is just it's just a phase. Exactly. You know, it's, it's school will be normal. Work, working environment will be normal in the future. So mm. like, it's not that much of a deal for now. La. You'd be surprised though how uh, as much as, you know, um, we want things to change, I don't think normal is going to be what we think normal was, you know. Um, at least, I mean, I'm I'm trying to be as optimistic <laughs> as 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 I can be. I just don't think normal is going to be what we think normal was be- before. Maybe it's um, a normal where we have learned to adapt. You now I, I always tell myself this. Um, I have a two year old kid that. To him, what is normal is going out, seeing everyone mask up. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, you get yeah. what I mean. To him, so he, he, his entire world is. Gr- Every time we 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 prepare to go out on a, on a, on a for for dinner or something, he's always gonna say, you know, Daddy, wear your mask. Okay. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't tend to have that. Huh. Right, then, you see? <laughs> so, th- that sort of opens up an entire new generation of people potentially or, or, or younger kids potentially thinking that okay this is what is normal for us right so school is going to be like that that would sort of um, ripple its way through higher education working environment so on and so forth meetings it's all going to be a tad different right so as much as I hope it's going to revert back to where things were, where we are all, you know, feeling the warmth of each other, bumping into each other's shoulders and feeling close, closely knit in a close group environment, uh, might still be a little ways to go before we reach back to that stage. La. That's my guess, okay? But hopefully it won't take long, you know, um, <laughs> because uh, nothing feels as good as a handshake, you know, nothing feels as good as... A fist bump don't get you there. A handshake nope. does, right? Isn't it? <laughs> not, so not it, the same it's, <laughs> it's not the same feeling, you know. Uh, uh, you know, a hug is different, you know. Mm. So it's all uh, it's that con- that human connection is is uh, something that we uh, we all still sorely miss. That's what I feel. I I, I get what you mean. Like that's mm. why you mentioned your your kid is growing up yeah. seeing a mask. I mean, when I was young, I, I grew up thinking that having a pen pal was going to be a big deal. Yeah. But now, <laughs> what is pen pal? What, what is writing letters <laughs> to people you've never seen before? So it's like, I, I get it, but like, uh, I also like, kind of like prepared for a future where online is integrated into learning. Because recently, the secondary schools were getting tablets. Yeah. So it's like, they're definitely not going to buy the tablet and just throw it away after COVID's over. Yep. It's definitely going to incorporate it in their future lessons. Mm. So I'm really getting used to the fact that everything is going to be more online. I'm just hoping that it's not going to be that much of a big portion and yep. physical will still be the the majority. Uh. That's yeah. my hope. Uh. I, think, I think the key word here is balance. La. We, just, we just have to figure out what that balance will look like. At this point, we don't know. We can only hope for the best. But in any case... Uh, I think time is up at this point. We are way past 15 minutes already. <laughs> time flies, isn't it? So um, anyway, it's been good. It's been very insightful having you along. Thanks for uh, So I'll see you in class, I suppose, right? <laughs> we, I will still be um, supervising your dissertation classes. That one's still a long way to still go. Still a long way to go. Still a long, huh? long way to go. Don't want to think about that first. Yeah, so... <laughs> So I would still see you possibly in the tail end of 2021. Yeah. Who knows, that's right? The, the, the that, that's your dissertation so, module yeah. coming up, right? July. So the tail end of 2021. So, all right, man. So thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. Uh, so I'll see you again soon, right? Thank With you. that, guys, uh, that would be it for today's episode for Beyond the Lecture. For more information about our, our episodes, you can go to YouTube and uh, search, for, search up for PSB Academy. For more information on our courses... 
you know where to find us. Just Google PSBN Academy and uh, the, the results would show and you can uh, sort of find your way to our websites. Okay, that's it. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Ciao.